In this diagram, we will draw a coronal section through the hippocampal formation and surrounding parahippocampal area. First, to orient ourselves to the position of the hippocampus, draw the left side of the brain and brainstem in the corner of the page. Show the anterior temporal horn of the lateral ventricle and then the tentorium cerebellum. Encircle the hippocampal and parahippocampal region. This is the region of interest in our drawing. Begin with the brainstem. Show the pons and then the midbrain. Extend our drawing across the basal surface of the brain and draw the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle. Next, draw a choroid plexus, which secretes cerebrospinal fluid, and then the choroid fissure, which separates the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle from the surrounding subarachnoid basal cisternal space. Indicate that the cisternal space adjacent to the lateral aspect of the midbrain is the ambient cistern. When the medial temporal lobe herniates into the basal cisterns, it does so first into the ambient cistern. Now we will draw the hippocampal formation. To do so, draw a double-sided S-shaped structure in two different steps. Then, mentally divide the S into its superior turn, horizontal stretch, and inferior turn. The cornu amonis comprises the superior turn, the subiculum lies along the horizontal stretch, and the anterior cortex is along the inferior turn. We will label them after we first draw the C-shaped dentate gyrus cupping the tip of the superior turn. Now starting from the tip of the superior turn, label CA4, then CA3, then CA2, and finally CA1. CA1 is particularly susceptible to anoxia. Next, label the horizontal stretch as the subiculum, and finally the inferior turn as the entorhinal cortex. Inside the inferior turn, label the parahippocampal gyrus. Then show the occipitotemporal gyrus infralateral to it. Indicate that the collateral sulcus separates them. Finally, include the tentorium cerebelli, over which the uncus of the medial temporal lobe herniates when there is increased intracranial pressure. From this angle, we can see that during uncle herniation, the medial temporal lobe first compresses the ipsilateral third nerve as it exits the midbrain, and then compresses the contralateral cerebral peduncle against its tentorium. This compression forms a so-called Kernahan's notch in that peduncle, causing body weakness on the side of the herniating temporal lobe. This concludes our drawing of the coronal section of the hippocampus.